Hello everyone, Amanda here, thanks for joining me. So today I'm coming to share a little project with you. So the first half of the video is showing you how to make the base and the second half will be me decorating some. So it's up to you how much you want to watch. Okay, so what we're making today is a mini tabbed faux memory decks card. <laughs> so this is an idea I've come up with as a little journal embellishment. Um, we're making journal embellishments over on my Facebook group Create with Scrimpy and Mummy for the next six weeks and every week I'll give a different um, prompt or idea um, for everybody to follow. So I'm going to show you how to make one of these without the need for a special die or a special punch which can be costly. Um, the only thing that I will be using, which you may not have, is an envelope punch board. If you don't have one, you can't, don't worry, because I have a template that I'm going to put on my coffee site with all the measurements and everything. So you could literally print that out, trace around it and make a template if needs be. Okay, but it's always good to know how to do things yourself. So I'm going to teach you. So this is a piece of cardstock. Um, you can use anything. Um, you know, you can use um, something a bit thinner and then layer up. But you want it to be sturdy because we're going to use it as, a, you know, to put in a journal, as a little in a tuck or a pocket or something like that. Okay, so four by three and a quarter so the first thing that I'm going to do is get my envelope punch board and I'm going to put the edge there it's on the long side on the far inch we're going to go up to the number two and punch okay like I say if you don't have one you can go on to my coffee site and print the template out and draw around it okay now I know that that's roughly three eighths of an inch, this tab bit roughly, so I'm going to go up to the three eighths of an inch mark and just cut the bottom one off as I want my tab at the top. Although, you know, whichever, it doesn't matter, if you want it at the bottom you just turn your card round. <laughs> it's irrelevant really. Right, so this is where the measurements come in. Okay, so... Based on the size of my card, which I've kept at four because I want it nice and neat so it could fit in a journal page that way on the long side because journal pages are normally no bigger than, say, five to five and a half. Or, you know, if you want it that way so it's not too tall, it's a dinky little thing. So what we need to do is we need to measure one and a half inches in from each side. Now, I will be working in inches on the video, but on the template which I'm going to show you in a minute, I've also put the centimetres. Okay, so one and a half inches in from that side, make a mark. And then one and a half inches from that side and make a mark. Okay, then you want to go up on that mark there, about three eighths of an inch. Right, so if you've got a ruler and you're on inches, I don't know if this is even focusing, but there is, where's the inch mark? There's the inch mark, okay? And there's half an inch, okay? Now each one of those, every single one in between are sixteenths and then we've got eighths and we've got quarters. So there's the half mark there, so the eight, three eighths is there, okay? So it's you've got one mark, that's a sixteenth, the next one is the eighth. It's there just for anybody that doesn't understand inches, okay? So then three eighths of an inch, make a dot. Three eighths of an inch, make a dot. Okay. Where you've got your dot, make yourself a little light cross with a pencil that can be rubbed out. All right. So let me just show you my template. This is what we're aiming for. Now you can pause the screen at this point and do a screenshot to keep those measurements if you like. However, my Kofi site link is in the description box below and I'm going to put this up there with all the measurements and I will make it into a JPEG so that you can, if you so desire, print it out cut it out, draw around it and make yourself a template because that's what I've done. I've got a template which I will always keep. It's already done, all the measurements are there and then every time I want to make one, I've got these little these little doofers here, okay? So there you go. 
All right, that's enough. <laughs> but learn how to make it by hand as well. So then I've got a singular hole punch. It's a quarter inch standard hole punch. You know, if you've got your normal office, you know, double um, hole punch, it's the same size. Cheapest chips on Amazon, eBay, it's just a single one. If you've got a cropper dial, you can use that. Use the larger hole. Um, you know, use what you've got. Everybody's got some sort of hole punch. I, I, I'm, I'm absolutely sure of it. So go to your cross and then punch your hole. Right, so one thing I just want to just re-emphasise is this is a full memory dex card. It's for decoration, for a bit of fun, for a journal embellishment. Uh, to make it, a, you know, a little card or a little, just a bit of fun to add to a journal. So it's not meant to be exact to fit on a memory dex, but it probably would do. <laughs> so then where you've got your little lines here cut up to the middle okay it'll go to the middle of your circle then what you want to do is you want to make another cut on each side of that cut now in Yorkshire we call it a Nats whisker okay uh, there's a few other well there's a, a rude version which I'm not gonna really go into <laughs> I'm sure you've got your own version in the region or country where you live it's just a small amount, a sliver, a cat's whisker, a gnat's whisker, whatever. Okay, recut either side of that original cut. And that is to mimic, you know, the little memory decks uh, cards. Okay, that's not very straight. I want it straight. Okay. Now, if you're making your own memory decks holder, you'd probably use bamboo sticks, in which case this circular um, thing here would be fine, but it's just for decoration. Alright, it's a full one. <laughs> then we're going to round the corners. Okay. And there you go, boom. Keep the first one you make as a template. Write template on it, put it to one side and go make yourself another. When you make your second one, all you have to do then, I mean this is not the right size, but imagine this is my second one. All I have to do then is lay that one on top and... Put a pencil mark where my holes are and my line and then like that and then I can just follow it and I don't have to keep measuring every single time templates I make templates for everything okay so the second half of the video now I'm just going to pause it while I collect some things together and I'm going to decorate a couple and as I'm decorating uh, one or two I will give you lots and lots of ideas along the way of other things that you could do when you're decorating them all right okay so I've fast forwarded uh, this section a bit so that it's not a half an hour long video and just one thing I just want to mention if you have a look at the tabs there on the memory decks cards that I'm using you'll see they're a slightly different shape to the tutorial and that's because I made a small error in my tutorial and I rounded that last edge when I should have put it back in the memory in the um, envelope punch board to the far right of the punching um, section and repunch. that's how you get that slanted shape but my uh, template is uh, the right shape so there you go <laughs> i just thought i'd mention that so all i've done here is i've inked them i've done some background stamping and i'm using dictionary page um i'm using this blue boss stick glue stick at the moment i got from my local um art shop quite cheap so i'll let you know how it goes um and i'm going to use up some of these tim holtz um paper dolls they're called aren't they and these are the smaller ones that a lovely lady sent me um so i'm just looking for um just bits and bobs to uh, decorate these with i'm um, just adding some washi tape for the ladies to sit on so they don't look like they're floating in the air um, and it's literally, I'm just picking up bits and bobs that's on my desk. I've got a few things out ready, but the rest of the stuff's just um, leftovers that's already on my desk. And these are great for that. Um, so yeah, I'm just gluing that on. Now, like I say, there's lots you can do with these. You can add pockets on the front. I'm going to show you one where I put a, um acetate frame. Um, you can turn them into little books there's so much you can do with them once you've uh, grasped that basic concept and that shape which is super easy it's really not difficult 
um, and you can really have some fun with them and it's little things and little elements like this that really makes a journal look fantastic and one person I'm going to mention who is an absolute queen at doing this is Bohemian Crafts um, I've been watching some of her videos lately and she very much does quite plain pages um, you know they're not um, patterned or digitalized and all of her decoration are things like this that she makes by hand and then she adds them to pockets and she makes flips out of them and all of her journals are made out of handmade items like this and they are amazing in my opinion she makes the best journals on YouTube um, so making things like this with just little elements and bits of stamping and bits of ripped up paper really will make your journals look fantastic now you can do them in any theme i've ended up doing mine in this vintage i've added the red because i'm determined that not everything's going to be brown but you can do them in different themes whatever you know make the uh, heap of the rolodex cards in uh, or memory decks or whatever you want to call them in advance and then you can decorate them to suit, layer up with some bit of collage and then have them ready. When you're making a journal, say you're doing a butterfly one, add butterflies. If you're doing um, nature floral theme, then add your flowers, etc, etc. So here I'm adding some um, Tim Holtz numbers um, and I'm using red because I'm, I love the red colour with the vintage things. It just lifts it so it's not all just brown and sludge. Um, I, I, I'm really that's the main thing that I don't like about vintage is you end up with everything brown and um, you know so try and be conscious to add some sort of colour somewhere um, yeah I, and I just think red goes fabulous so I thought I'd try and add on some of this old um, it's dress pattern yeah you know sewing pattern um and see what that looks like for a nice layered background i'm sorry i'm a little bit out of shot there do apologize sometimes when i'm creating i don't always realize that i'm not fully in shot and um, but i do tend to there you go you can see i do keep it uh, keep a check and uh, try and adjust it if i think i'm out of shot and um, so i'm just tucking it over the back it adds interest to the back but i've left the back mostly plain and um, so you can write on them so they're functional so the decorative and the functional um, so you can put these in tucks, in pockets, in envelopes, in uh, bags, in, in whatever space but you can also use them as a focal point on, on a tag, you could put them on a flip element, there's lots and lots of things that you can do. So on this one I've made this little frame um, and I've die cut just some craft card and some acetate and then I've glued it on and added some skinny foam tape well it's not skinny foam tape it's foam tape that I've cut down to suit myself and um, just don't use your best scissors um, and so I'm creating a frame there so I started cutting this image and then I actually did cut it uh, a little bit too small to be honest <laughs> all went a bit wrong so I decided that I would save that one for another day and use a different image so I've added this lady here um, there's some free vintage um, photographs on my Kofi site um, what I do over there is I put as many free stuff on as I can and um, that you don't have to pay for are they free? I can't remember if they're free or if they're a pound um, so that everybody who does journaling can get a chance to get some um, some some things for, for next to nothing or for nothing um, so there are some over there if, if you don't know where to look or where to get them from Okay, but Pinterest is a fantastic source for vintage photographs you really can't go wrong um, so there I've, it's kind of turned that frame into a little bit of a pocket so I can take that vintage uh, photo in or out if I so desire um, and so now I'm just layering up with little bits of um, word ephemera that have been left over on my desk from a previous project just literally ink them up, rip them and glue them on and it just adds extra interest to your whatever you're decorating it doesn't have to even be one of these it can be anything just the more little things that you put on then the more that the eye has got to look at obviously it stands to reason um, and the more interest that you're adding to to your little decorative elements um, so I think these are fab you could even turn the this card itself into a pocket 
you know raise it up on some dimensional foam and slide things behind it put it on a page and you've just got that fancy you know decorative side there with the punched hole um memory dex element um so i'm looking for some am I, oh, i'm looking for i couldn't remember what i was doing then i wanted to put a butterfly on like i say i'm always wanting to add a little pop of color on vintage projects so that they're not dark and dingy so i've just found one of my little mini butterflies there and just using up some bits of washi tape and what i do is i'll i'll if i've got leftover bits of ripped washi tape they end up in a long line on my desk in front of my uh, in front of where i sit and <laughs> i've got to try and use them then so the those are the little vintage ones all done um i'm ready to go um now i did create another one um, for anybody you know just extra ideas because not everybody wants to do vintage so I thought I'd do another one just to show that you can have them in any theme so these what I'm using now is actually a decorative element that I did on another video um, using did I use my box of shame I can't remember if I used the box of shame but I've got a video on these um, like decorative I don't know if they were like faux stamps or I can't remember what I called the video. I'll leave it as a suggested at the end. Um, and I, I ended up with a box full of these. Um, and so they're already done. So have a look through if there's embellishments that you've already made. Get them used up. That looks lovely on there. And what I'm going to do is just glue it on two sides. So that then I could maybe tuck a little ticket or a little tiny tag down the back if I so desire. Um, and that, that element's already done. So... Um, you know I'm using what I've got using up the embellishments that I've already made and then if I do a, a nature theme journal then I've got a card ready ready to go um, so there you go um, I did leave it there at the three so I hope those are useful and I hope you'll have a go thanks for watching bye